Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hi everybody and welcome to today's episode. No, I'm not out in the forest. I'm actually in my yard, which has a forest in it. <laughs> I guess I am in the forest. Uh, but we have by our pool, there's the pool, came with the property, partially developed, came with this little pad. At, not so little actually. At one point, um, the people who were developing this property before us had planned for a really big, like a, a pool house, um, it's got the pump house of the pool on it. And um, this is a very sturdy structural slab that was intended for a building to go on. Now, although I've been coming up with ideas in terms of putting a building here, that's gonna be way down the road because, well, we did enough this past year in terms of getting the house built and working on the yard and all that stuff. And frankly, that's putting another building right here is not in the cards this year. But we do wanna utilize this space. It's right opposite the pool. We want to use it for something, and I think today is the day that we figure that out. This big slab of concrete has a nice area right here where there's no pipes. See, they have the infrastructures all in there. I think those all lead into that septic tank I actually found out back before. So there are spaces in septic and places eventually for there to be water in that, but that's all not happening this year but I'm trying to find a space on this pad where I can do a little bit of fun stuff and I think this area right in here can be swept out and uh, be made fairly nice with not much effort so I'm gonna get the broom I've been moving stuff out of the way that's the uh, propane tanks for the the pool heater over there which were out of propane I'm gonna see if I can actually move those tanks over to that side and just generally make this area a little bit more usable because I have something planned for this space that I think is going to be pretty fun. Got the patio area cleared off and uh, decided what we were going to put on there. Melissa's actually uh, filming right now. Hello! So she knows what we're putting there. Check out the weather though, it's pouring rain and uh, maybe show them what's in the back. <laughs> Can you tell what it is? <laughs> well, we'll show them once we get out. But We got it to... Um, Ended up buying a little camper to put there. It's not in terrible shape, it doesn't leak. I guess we'll find out by the time we get home. They, they say it doesn't leak and it didn't look like there's any leaks in it. Uh, but we're gonna make like a little guest suite out there, a little a little uh, poolside cabana. And the best part is we have a little living quarters and we don't have to pay the taxes for another little building or suite out there. We can park a trailer and Bob's your uncle. <laughs> so now uh, we gotta get it home, hopefully safe and sound and I'll try and back this thing up on top of that pad. The idea was to simply put the camper on the pad. Let's just say that did not go as planned. I am buried. I am stuck between a rock and a hard place. Literally, a rock and a hard place. And um, not having a great time, if I'm honest. I am completely stuck and I can't go forward and I'm sliding and can't go back. My only hope is to move that hundreds and hundreds of pounds boulder out of the way so that I can try and get this thing forward. Not a great day so far. Well, with Steven's help, we got the rock moved and I was able to almost get the truck out. I'm kind of wedged by a branch right now, thus I've got the tree trimmer. And I don't swear very often, but let me tell you, the sensor would have had a lot of joy if that camera was running. The last couple minutes, I discovered parts of my vocabulary I forgot about. So I'm gonna try and get this thing unwedged from this tree and hopefully it back out to freedom, which is exactly where I started. I didn't get any further along than what I am right now, but can't focus on that. I just have to focus on getting this branch out of the way so I can pull this thing through. Well, I guess at the end of the day, it's just grass. I can always fill it and seed it and it'll come back to life. Uh, Steven's help helping me. We've made a little ramp. Uh, if you just do it lengthwise and just butt it right up against it. 
hopefully the wheel will be able to make it up on that and we'll go tick 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 bump and up then we can unhitch it and just move it by hand that's the dream let's see if we can make this dream a reality this is probably the most redneck action i've had in my backyard possibly ever but it's almost up on the back the wheels are up that's the important thing but we have a major thunderstorm about to start so i'm going to hightail it out of dodge here get off of the uh, get away from all the trees and i guess reassess what i'm doing with this thing in a little bit not a moment too soon at least it's up on the pad back there over there and when the rain eventually stops i'll be able to go over there and try getting it up on uh on the pad properly to do that i'm planning on using my car jack hoping that that pad is clear enough that i can jack it up and um get some wheels under it and move the darn thing chocks for the back tires i don't know it's just i'm just guessing at this point of what i'm doing it's not like i've ever done this before <laughs> well let's hope it works out so what you guys missed was a whole bunch of activity basically i got the jack underneath it propped it up hooked the lawnmower onto the chain and dragged it like a little champ over here now i had to get the lawnmower out before we close it off because i wouldn't be able to drive back out and we're going to push it by hand so that we have kind of the, an angled sitting area out here it's almost where it needs to go and ignore the ignore the paint we're gonna we're gonna be doing something with that down the road but the goal right now is to try and get it basically pushed over a little bit more and then uh we'll get it secure and the next stop for me is to try and grab some paint i'm hoping that home depot here will have what i need i'm going to use something that's more of an oil base so it can withstand the weather uh, like a trem clad or rust-oleum or something like that plus the price is really good they make so much of that stuff it's it's pretty cheap <laughs> so uh hopefully they got the color combo that we're looking for and we'll have success they're sold out of the color i want to grab they don't have any of the off-white they just have flat white i guess everybody else is out there painting their trailers this weekend too i'll have to go hit up another store yeah i gave the camper a pressure wash because it's although it's a 1970s camper we want it to look like it's a 50s camper and the last people kind of did too the only thing we really don't like well not a big fan of the gray don't like how they blacked out the windows and well the only thing we kind of liked was that turquoisey color and we're gonna use that type of color but um they used a very a matte finish not a gloss and it i don't know it just doesn't look right so i'm gonna basically repaint the whole thing now that it's all washed off any loose paint like along the bottom there is off and i'm gonna let it set up and dry and hopefully i can start laying the color on my goal is to do um white all across there the turquoisey color all across there and then this i'm gonna try and think of something kind of fancy to do uh it was gold originally which would have been awesome but i don't really feel like stripping the paint off maybe i will i don't know we'll see um the wheels i'm thinking you know your traditional kind of like red with a white wall I, and i have an idea for the white wall i'm gonna cheat i think um but first steps are done I'm gonna let that dry and then drag the paint over and uh see if i can start laying a coat of paint on the color that i've picked for the top part blup all i'm not gonna paint like that ah! the color i picked for the top part where it's currently gray is going to go recreational white and then the bottom is going to be uh the same sort of turquoise but we're going to do a gloss and i'm going to continue the stripe across so it seems harmonious from a distance hopefully that will look good i'm going to get started with uh edging all around the bits and the trim and everywhere that's basically black um and i'm going to roll out actually the rest of it so Here's to some painting, starting now. Okay, I've started edging around the windows and around the vents and up at the top. And I'm going to begin rolling, which I've already done in that area, uh, just with a little paint roller and the trem clad. The reason I picked the trem clad is it'll be glossy. The rain should just glide right off of it. And it's funny because this is kind of stationary. It's not quite a house. It's not quite a camper because it's not going to be towed down the road probably for a long time ever again. Um, so I do need the paint to stick on there, but um, this should do the trick. 
Anyway, the old paint that was on there, ironically, the guy basically just painted it with primer, so good for me. Um, and it's basically going back to the color that it was originally. So if somebody ever saw this camper after, you know, having it been painted, they'd be like, well, what'd you do? You put it right back to the way it was. <laughs> but um, just wait and see. You'll see what this looks like once we get her all done. Well, the beige is more or less done. I'm gonna let that dry. And after it's dry, I will tear into the bottom por portion, which is gonna be the uh, turquoisey sort of seafoam green color. So first step done, now just to wait and then on to the next. Since I put the trailer in the backyard, it started raining and the truck was stuck in the backyard. <laughs> oh my gosh, I never wanna get, uh, I have to fix that lawn. At least I'll never have to worry about putting that trailer back there again. I'm gonna go wash this off. I can't paint the bottom of it until everything dries off. There's like giant chunks of lawn. Oh my goodness. What a mess. Oh well, at least it'll grow back eventually. Well, the rain has finally stopped. I can see some blue in the sky. And it's time I put some bluey green paint on the bottom of the camper. I have been summoned in for supper, but you can see in the background back there, I got half the trailer, well, I got the blue, the first coat of blue on anyway. Making good progress, I'm gonna eat and then head back out. Dinner is done. That's looking more 1950s than it was before. But I'm gonna do a little uh, schnazzy business on the wheel that I'm only doing because it's stationary. I wouldn't recommend doing what I'm about to do on a regular tire, <laughs> but I'm gonna have a little fun with it. I was reminded by a story that my dad told me once. <laughs> I see he worked at a car lot years ago and he said that um, they'd use like shoe polish to clean the tires and they even had a guy that would come to the lot and they'd paint a white wall onto a black wall so that they didn't have to buy another white wall for it if it had mismatched tires. And that got me to thinking, what happens if I took this white paint and gave this camper a glorious wide white wall. <laughs> I don't know how well that application would hold up on the road. I imagine the minute it started getting dirty or flex a lot, you might see cracking. But um, in a pinch, in this situation, because it's gonna be stationary, I think it'll be fine. And honestly, it looks pretty darn cute. Now, the outside is coming along, but I have to clean up this debris, uh, make it look a little bit more, I don't know, pleasant out here. And then we gotta tackle the inside too. So that's what's next. Before I can start decorating, we've got Steven here. There's a Steven. Um, we're gonna get these boards out of the way. I'll probably eventually get rid of them completely, but we're gonna move them off of the pad because I wanna do a little bit of something happening up front here. And right now that's in the way. So you ready to help me move? Yep. All right, let's get her done. All right, with the debris out of the way here, I can actually start thinking about a little decoration and to do that, I've been doing a little shopping. I didn't pick up a whole lot of stuff. Some flowers, a little uh, cutesy little rattan style table, two inexpensive uh, Adirondack style chairs, an outdoor rug, and apparently this flat little pancake thing turns into an outdoor pillow. I guess we'll see. Hoping that that can go together and make a nice little display. But somewhere around my yard, I've got some flower pots I'm gonna try reusing, so I'm gonna go get those. That is looking much more inviting now that we got the flowers in place and the pillows on the chair. That is one cute little camper setup. Now to do a little uh, finishing touches on the inside and uh, we might just call it a day. Some finishing touches and a little dining area. We got this retro pink flamingo tablecloth, little basket style light. And the last uh, owner's painted a little painting. <laughs> so it is uh, just about right. And I think, is it Jason approved? Yeah. It is Jason approved in here? Yeah. Okay, well that's all we needed was a thumbs up. I'm gonna go grab the electrical cord so we can uh, plug it in and get all the lights working. The only other thing I probably would wanna do in here would be to take the tinting that they have off and put cutesy little curtains in the windows, but it's actually pretty decent, even just as it is. It's got a new fridge, 
they put hardwood floors in, which we're gonna have to mop up again. Is it comfy? All right, well, that's all it's meant for. Off dad goes. So even with getting stuck in the mud and having to dig myself out and having a terrible day, we still were able to get this camper in place. And there it is behind us, being enjoyed by the family already. And for the grand cost, the camper itself was 3,000 Canadian dollars. The chairs and plants and paint and everything was under $300. So for 3,300 bucks, we got a nice little pool house. It's a perfect day for it. We got the pool opened up and everybody's having fun and having a good time today. So if this was a 1990s rom-com movie, the trailer would have let its hair down and taken its glasses off and shook it all around because that thing looks like brand new. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching very much. I um, hope you enjoyed today's video. So if you want to try um, redoing your camper for under 300 bucks and creating a little area like this, you probably could too. Um, I think it turned out pretty cool. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do so. And uh, we'll see you guys soon and bye for now.